I haven't had crying during sex since high school, you know? <laughs> you or her or both? What, does it matter? Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode beta 79 for Friday the 6th of May 2016. This is your two lifelong friends talk about geek stuff and whatever else comes to mind. I'm Amos and uh, yeah, that guy's Kent. Hey, what's going on, man? <laughs> oh, so, uh, so, so this week's been fun. It's been super exciting. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm just, dude, I'm, I'm happy it's Friday. It's Friday yeah. night. I don't have to go to work tomorrow. It's okay. Oh, so okay. last night, last, last night, and this is why, why I was so tired this morning. And everything else I told you I had a geek hangover. Um, uh, so I got a couple things that lead into it, but so I got this computer. I bought this computer. I bought all the parts, put it all together over yep. the last week. I have tried un, well once semi successfully, but mostly unsuccessfully to get the, um, to get, it may turn it into a Hackintosh. Yeah. And the, the, the first, furthest I've gotten so far is OS 10 installed. And the only problems on it were that only half the RAM was recognized and that I couldn't get the graphics card driver loaded. So it wouldn't use the full optimal optimized graphics. Yeah. Which are actually really common, especially when you're dealing with a new ish, chipset and processor and all that stuff. I got the, eventually I got the, uh, Ram figured out that is that is actually really simple. So I got that figured out. It reads all 32 gigs, but I, I still haven't gotten the video card figured out. Well, I then flipped it and said, you know what? I'm just going to install windows on it just to make sure the parts work so I can throw the boxes away because I don't want to throw the box away and have to ship something back. That's not working or whatever. Right. Right. And so I installed Windows 10, and then I installed Steam, and then I installed Civilization 5. And so last night was kind of like my last night of just hanging out, because after we get done with the show today, I'm tearing everything down and going to very minimalist, so I can get, I can get, start getting things set up to get packed next Friday. And the reason I have to get things packed next, or have to set up today to get things packed next Friday is because Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, I'm playing in the fucking exercise. Oh, God, that's right. War games. Yep. It, and this is a modular one. Apparently, different units are doing it at different times with different goals and different everything else. Most units are going on like a uh, two 10-hour shifts with like a four-hour overlap in the middle. So it's actually like an 18-hour day, not a 24-hour day. Um, which is really rather odd, but not maintenance. No, we're going to a normal 24 hour schedule while our pilots are not, they're just flying during the day, their normal day lines and such, but we get to hang out all night long and do the normal 24 hour schedule and, and generate aircraft. So that's going to be awesome. So that's going to occupy my time Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then Thursday night, I should get the night off. Because I've got TMO all day Friday. So everything's got to be ready by then. Knowing that last night was the last night for me to just hang out and do nothing. I went ahead and started playing Civilization 5. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And I wanted to play one full game. That full game did not finish. And I went to bed at 8 o'clock this morning. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Yeah, it eventually got to where, okay, as soon as I finally kill this one last empire, I'm done and I'll move on. And it, I found out that that one empire had like three or four little one-off shoots off in the middle of nowhere. Yep. And just getting to those took 20 minutes each, let alone actually bombarding them down and killing them and, and taking their plunder and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, that was uh, that's that was my geek hangover. That was That's what I've been doing. But... On a side note, the computer runs fantastically. <laughs> Got it's, all the graphics turned all the way up. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Well, it's a it's a it's a five year six year old game now, so oh, it's true too. So that should definitely be the case. But it's I, it was better there than I ever saw it on my on my laptop because I could never quite turn up all the graphics stuff like that on my laptop. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, yeah, really, really awesome. I love that game. I just love Civilization in general. It's just so fun. Um, yeah, so that's uh, that's kind of how my last or last week here will be, which explains why from now on, after, a, a, anything after this show until probably early July. Um, if there's problems, if there's editing issues, whatever else, blame that guy. Like, yeah, that, we're that guy. We always say we're still in beta. I think we might actually go back to alpha. <laughs> <laughs> how's, your, how's your video? How's your video editing skills? Um, I can uh, lop the ends off. Oh yeah, this should be good. <laughs> this oh, should be yeah. fantastic. So um, I've actually I've never played with the video podcast portion. I've done the YouTube stuff, but but not so much the video podcast portion. So that'll be an interesting learning curve. We'll see what happens with that. Yeah. Yeah. So I did something kind of cool this week. Uh, it's it. actually kind of a, a project that I've, I've been doing for the last couple of weeks off and on as I've found time. Uh, have you ever read the book or, or heard of the children's book called Flat Stanley? Yeah. 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 Yeah, so for those that, that aren't familiar, it's it's about this boy that he's sitting in his room and this bulletin board falls off the wall and smashes him flat. Well, Because that so happens. Now, right, so now he's this you know flat boy. His name's Stanley, so he's flat Stanley. His parents were going to send him to his grandparents' house for vacation, but they couldn't afford to put him on a plane so they're like well you're flat now we can put you in an envelope and mail you to your grandparents so he goes there and they have a good time and blah 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 so schools like elementary schools now like all over the country do this thing it's like a flat stanley stanley project so each of the kids take a a photograph of themselves and then like a, a, a like a cut out figure and they put their picture on the the cut out figure and mm-hmm. then they mail Selves their flat version to like a family member or a friend or something like that that lives far away. And the idea is that you take pictures with your visitor because they're there with you on vacation. And then, right, right. So, um, our good friend Jeremy, his daughter Lorana sent me herself um, on vacation. So, I had flat Lorana visiting for the last couple of weeks. So, we did some, some- <laughs> for, for, for the last couple of weeks yeah yeah <laughs> so <laughs> well i sent, I sent her I, I sent her home earlier this week mm. so she was here i think just shy of three weeks in total um, but it was kind of cool it gave us an excuse uh stephanie and i went out uh kind of went up on the hill like at the base of the mountains uh what day was that? i don't know it was earlier this week and we took some pictures with you know, typical New Mexico things like a, a cactus and a tumbleweed. Took a picture of the the desert sunset. Right. Uh, things that that you would want to see if you came from Indiana to New Mexico. That you want to see something New Mexico. Okay. Okay. That's that's a good qualifier. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Because um, you know that <laughs> that kid has never been in New Mexico. She doesn't know what a desert is. So it'd be really cool that. Flat Lorana got to experience a cactus in a in a tumbleweed. I don't right, know. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But it was kind of neat. It was. It, it gave us an excuse to get out and walk around the the desert a little bit. Start looking at things through a different set of eyes. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um. I I've done a I've I've, been, I've participated in a few of those. I've never actually sent one out myself because when we were supposed to do it in school, like I was sick. I think I had chicken pox or something like that. It was like over Christmas in like second grade or something. Um. So I, I've never actually sent one out myself, which is probably good because I've never lived so far away from my family <laughs> until I joined the military. <laughs> right. I've always, right. I've got a, I've got a pocket in Indiana and a pocket in California. I've always moved in between those two locations. Right. <clears throat> um, so it wouldn't have been all that exciting. Oh, yay. You took pictures of my, my flat Anthony at the same place as I was at last summer. <laughs> right. <laughs> good job. Yeah. But it's cool that you could do that for her. Um, I'm sure she'll enjoy that. Yeah, I hope so. I sent her a little uh, souvenir of her trip as, as well as a, a New Mexico magnet. Oh, I, f- I figured you were just going to send her dirt. Yeah, I, I actually <laughs> thought about that. That's what I'm saying in the envelope. <laughs> oh, I'm sure some got in there anyway. 
<laughs> dust, man, you can dust this house, and four hours later, it'll look like you didn't dust. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's that's how that works. Yeah, it's irritating to live in a desert. Oh man. So um, so this week I did more out processing. I have everything done except for like three of my check marks, three of my little check mark things. Yeah, which that that's a hell of a lot of progress because they there's probably what like sixty or seventy blocks now. Yep. Yeah, it, yeah. it gets kind of ridiculous. And I thought I'd meet a lot of resistance because so many of them you can't do until you're uh, until you're within so many days out. And I'm not within five days out or seven days out or two days out even. And they were signing off. They're like, oh, yeah, the exercise next week. You're not going to have time. And I was like, sweet. So I got almost all of it done. The only thing I have left is the squatter now processing checklist, which I've got a day dedicated just to that. Um. But man, I'm almost out of here. I'm almost gone. Like I've been here for uh, one year and one day now. Oh wow! Yeah, actually over a year now. Yeah. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, I'm ready to go. There, there's, there, there comes a point where no matter how much fun you're having or how much something means to you, it's time to move past that. Mm -hmm. And with very few exceptions. That's the case on everything in life. Mm, mm, mm. Um, hopefully your your marriage is one of those. Um, <laughs> my first marriage definitely was. <laughs> um, <laughs> Time to move yeah. beyond that. Um, <laughs> but uh, there's cer certain things. I, I'm, I'm, a, uh, I'm a sentimental person. I know you know this, but for, for yeah. our listeners, when, when, when I have something and... Uh, and think it's really awesome and there's something meaningful to it, I will hold on to something for years. Absolutely years. And I'm going to show you something today. I don't even know if you know about this or not. Okay. Do you have any idea what this is? Um, some string, perhaps? Maybe like um, not uh, <laughs> shoot string. Is that hair? No, no. It, it's a, it is a string bracelet that Amber, my 16-year-old daughter, got for me out of a little vending machine um, when I went to visit them in South Carolina about, well, it was 2009, before, right before I deployed to Kuwait. And she gave it to me, and she said, Daddy, here, wear this so that you'll think of us while you're gone. But, of course, I couldn't put it on my wrist because it was pink. <laughs> so I wore it on my ankle. Uh-huh. For seven years, one month, and one day. It never came off, not a single time. And this week, like two days ago, while I was tightening it up around my ankle to put my boots on, it snapped. Oh, wow. And I, I always knew the day would come when it would, when it would just fall apart. I mean, the color's been gone from it from, for years, um, you know, and, and everybody always asks, like, well, and when they hear about it, they're like, doesn't it stink? You've never taken it off? No, I wash it. I mean, every time I wash my leg, I wash my string. Right. Um, you're, you're pulling your foot up to your face to smell it anyway. <laughs> no shit. But I, I'd always, I'd always, always love the thought of, well, I, when I wash my leg, I move the string out of the way so I don't have to wash it when I wash the rest of my leg. No, you just wash right over it like <laughs> yeah. fucking idiots. So, um, so yeah, that was that was the thing, and I found it interesting because my my daughter Amber, well Ashley was there when it happened, and she doesn't remember. She doesn't like she doesn't care. She's like, oh yeah, you've got a thing. Who cares? And Amber, like whenever I mentioned it to her, you know, or or she saw it or whatever, she'd be like, oh, you still got that? Okay, cool. And that's all it was. But I remember the, the the feeling when it actually snapped, and I sent a picture of it. The, the you know after it snapped to my wife, and to to Amber, and Amber was like, "Holy crap!" Like it it came off. My wow. wife's reaction was a little bit different. She always complained about it. She's like, "God damn it! Just take the thing off! Like it's stupid. Why is it on there? You know, blah 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 blah." And her reaction when it came off was, "Wow." I didn't think it'd ever come off. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I thought that was interesting that, 
you know, some people have necklaces and things like that, or, or you know, little tokens. Um, what did you take with you when you deployed? That was, uh, you know, something that reminded you of the family. Well, because daily reminders actually, I have found they really, really help. It sounds so stupid, but it, oh, it, and well, and here's the thing. Uh, yeah, there you go. I, Strengths just put something in the chat room like it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And see, I'm I'm kind of the same way. I'm 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 fairly sentimental about things i don't know if i could go seven years though with something like that um but every time that i would go tdy it didn't matter if it was a three-day tdy a month-long tdy a uh, full up six-month deployment it didn't matter how long i was going to be gone isaac would give me something hmm. uh any, anything, anything. And it, actually, Lucas did it when he was really little, but he didn't do it very long. Isaac, like every single time, um, up until just a couple of years ago. And I never got rid of any of those things. My backpack that I take with me, no matter where I'm, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be a TDY. It's, it's the backpack I had at South by Southwest, mm -hmm. the backpack that goes with me everywhere. If I would have opened that up and opened one of the compartments and look all the way down on the bottom... There's a array of things in there, like a Pokemon card. There's a keychain with a little, um, like a little light up thing on it. Uh, there's a, a a coin. There's all, all these things that Isaac has given me over the years to remember. Here, Dad, this is to remember me by. Hmm. It's still in my bag, and it's not leaving my bag. It's part of my kit. It, it goes. Right. And the thing that gets me is it's it seems retarded. It seems completely stupid when it's going on from the from the military member's point of view, or a dad's right. point of view, or whatever. You're, you're like, of course I'm going to think about you, like duh. But then, you know, if you flip it around, you think from their point of view. Well, you're not. They're not there, and they they know they're going to miss you and and everything else. But then you get halfway through a, an eight month deployment, you know, out there in the shit when you're getting bombs dropped and everything else. And then you get into your barracks or you get into your room or you get to your cot or whatever it is. And sitting there beside your pillow is, you know, this little token that your kid gave you. It really just helps bring you back like, okay, well, this this is why I'm here. Yeah, this, it makes it real. It, it does. Right. It does. It's, it keeps you from from that total separation of uh, of just not giving a shit, you know? Right. Yeah. 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 Because especially in a deployed location, like you said, it's not like you're going out to have fun with your friends after work. You come home and you're still in the shit. There's the alarm yeah. will off ten minutes after you get home. You gotta you go run to a bunker or you know, whatever. You're you're always dealing with some kind of shit. So when you can just sit by yourself on your cot or whatever and you know, just touch and look at the things that <clears throat> you write back at home, it's just it's mm -hmm. important. It's a it's a big deal. Yeah, and uh, I know a lot of people take pictures of their family, th things like that. I I tend not to like pictures. Because it, it gives me something that I have, to, I can dwell on, and mm. it's it, it's just odd to me. I I prefer not having pictures there every single day right in front of me. Um, sure. If I have them off to the side and flip through them occasionally, whatever else, or look at my phone if I if I have my phone, you know, or or on the computer, mm. or something like that, that's fine. But to see it every day, it, it's a, it's a little too visually representative of the person. But having some sort of token just to like you know, every time I've put my boots on for the last seven years. This I've had to tighten this bracelet every single day, you <laughs> yeah. know, and sometimes not even when I'm when I'm not even working, you know, and it's been great because we've been we've been separated a, a little bit longer than that, you know, because they've lived with their mom for a little bit longer than that. And it was just this thing that, you know, it was awesome. So yeah. I, I felt that was a that was, that'd be a fun thing to bring up and, and see your point of view on it. Um, if, if you're listening or watching this and you've been separated from your kids or, or your spouse or whatever else, and you've got something like that, that you, um, care to share, just, uh, you know, throw it on the th hit Twitter at ritual misery and show us a picture of it and, uh, yeah. share your story. Yeah. We'd love to hear that and, and see what you got to show us. I think that's uh, it's fascinating what different people have. Um, just don't no dildo pics. Uh, I mean, <laughs> yeah, please, please. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, you can. Yeah, can, I mean, if, if that's your thing, you know, you put a little smiley face on it and that's what, that's what's up for you. I mean, you know, it's whatever. So, um, um, uh, my fucking flits. 
Sure. It's in the uh, in the chat room, asked if I can repair the bracelet. What I'm actually going to do is I'm, I think I'm going to because it's it's a fairly common bracelet to find, you know, the little pink diagonal whatever. Um, I'm uh, I'm going to get it. This might have been in my intent for like a long time. I just haven't had the opportunity per se. I'm going to get it tattooed on my ankle. Oh, there you go. So. Um, I wanted to do it like to remove it after the tattoo is on there, but whatever, I'll, uh, I'll do what I can do. So that'll be the next tattoo that I get is the, uh, the pink bracelet on my ankle. Yeah. Right on. That's, so. that's perfect. Oh man. Um, so, uh, so you watched a, you watched a, uh, one of these this week. And as much as I hate that we don't have a footer to that, I still love that sound. Like it, it, it you know, even it's two weeks in a row that I've had a TED talk and you haven't. Well, you know, it's <laughs> between Civilization Five and and trying to leave this fucking place. <laughs> um, yeah, I've been a little busy. Right. So uh, let's talk about penises. Oh, what? What? Yeah. So I watched a talk by Diane Kelly. She oh, okay. Is She's a scientist. Uh, uh-huh. Oh, sure. Yeah. In anatomy. Um, She's a cock gazer. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, exactly. <laughs> she called her talk, What We Didn't Know About Penis Anatomy. Okay, fair enough. The, so she starts that, out her talk. Sound, that at least sounds scientific. Right, yeah. So she starts out her talk talking about what, why is there a thing called a penis? What is a penis for? Why? Why, why is it a thing? And then she explains the, the was she, was she hot or was she ugly? Um, she was um, neutral. Let's oh. call her like borderline androgynous. I would say. Well, she's there. Her, that's why she's got so many questions about the penis. <laughs> right. So she was like, "Okay, so what? What's a penis for?" Okay, then she gave us a basic, like sixth grader breakdown of the birds and the bees that sperm has to meet the egg in order to reproduce. And there has to be a way to get the sperm to the egg. And the way to do that is to have something that's rigid to insert into the place where the eggs are to deposit the sperm, blah, blah, blah. All right. But, but how, but how is the penis rigid? It's not a bone. It's not, you know, blah, 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 blah. So anyway, so, so then she really starts getting into the science of, she starts explaining hydrostatic skeletons which is not bone it's like rigid structures that are like over top of uh different tissues like uh softer tissues and things like that uh think of an earthworm so got like an exoskeleton Mm -hmm. right but it's it's not hard you know it's not like bone Mm -hmm. it's you know kind of a floppy wiggly thing so a skeleton Structure is basically just something that uh, keeps shape, like softer. Th- yeah, keeps shape, keeps softer things um, inside of it safe and or or around it in certain cases, like you know, like a, a mammal, for example. It, it, it provides structure to a squishy bag of flesh. There you go, exactly that, and allows for movement. Uh, so the the thing about a penis, though is that it doesn't fit the normal model of a hydrostatic skeleton. In the case of an earthworm, right, you pick up an earthworm, it's just floppy. Like, there's no way to harden it, I guess. Okay. All you, right, so, you could leave it in the sun, but... <laughs> well, there is that. Um, right, but then... But then, then, it's, then it shrivels up and gets, gets hard. That's like, like uh, the opposite of a penis, right? Right. <laughs> So the, the normal structures found in nature, like in the case, I'm going to keep using the earthworm example because I can't think of any of the others. Uh, the way that the, the fibers on the like, exterior of this, I have to keep looking at this, hydrostatic skeleton, <laughs> it's kind of like this, this helical coil that goes around the outside of the cylinder. Okay. Where... In penises, and this is what she discovered. This was a, a part of anatomy that was previously unknown until she did this research. That the 
the layers of the skeletal structure of a of a penis, the fibers instead of being helical, they're at zero degrees and ninety degrees and overlap this way. And she did it. She showed an experiment where she had a water balloon, like a, a long cylindrical water balloon, inside of a basically looked like a sock, but it was a it was like an interwoven thing. Well, she did mm-hmm. an experiment with the the helical pattern. And it was very flexible. Um, you could move it. You could stretch it. But when she redid it and put the the, the weave pattern at zero and ninety degrees, mm-hmm. it was not stretchy, was not bendable. And there you go. That's okay. That's how, how a penis can get hard and not bend. Because that was one of the things that she said was it's essential for the continuation of a species for the survival of a species that a penis isn't floppy so so apparently all the floppy dick guys died out years ago yeah yeah (laughs) that's why we all have non-floppy penises if you can't if if you got a floppy penis you can't reproduce so that that those genes go away Mm. that's uh yay so 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 i i i I, (laughs) I have to ask the question, what made you watch this particular one? Like, what, what was the decision process that you went, were you sitting there like, my dick's hard, wonder <laughs> why. Let's go not, look on TED. I'm usually not on TED.com. <laughs> when yeah. your dick's hard, huh? That's no? That's <laughs> a different podcast. <laughs> all right, all right. So, so what was the decision process? I just went to TED.com. It's like, oh, let's see what what we have interesting. What's new? What's new? And you know how uh, towards the bottom of the page they have collections, mm-hmm. like a, a playlist? You found the well, penis they, collection? No. See, that would have been cool. But no, they didn't have that. They had the, like uh, science facts or facts about the human body or something to that, that effect. I was like, oh, okay, that, that kind of sounds cool. So I clicked on that. I was like, ah, this is about the brain. Uh, this is about this. Get to the very last one, the bottom of the list was about penises. I was like, that sounds fun to talk about on Ritual Misery. <laughs> <laughs> Click. <laughs> wow. I, I, in all honesty, I think I've actually seen this one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it was one of the one of the earlier ones that I watched at one point when they had a, a random feed on the site. You could just hit play, and it would just play random oh, one, yeah, random ones. The app, the app still has that. Yeah. Yeah, um, uh, that's one of the ones that came up, and you you don't get four minutes into a, a penis TED talk and, and decide, ah, I'm not going to watch the rest of this. You know, <laughs> yeah. you, you're already com- you're committed to that point. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, so would you recommend or not recommend this one? I absolutely recommend, especially to this audience. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Earthworms and penises, folks. Earthworms and penises. Oh, man. So, uh, so I came across a thing this week, a website called geekandgamergear.com. Yes. Oh, oh, I'm slightly familiar with this. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I thought it was a bunch of bullshit. So I went over there and took a look at it and there's actually like tons of really cool shit on there. Um, from, from Nintendo USB controllers to fucking Pokemon dolls and shit. Like it's all the shit that this audience geeks out about is represented it it was i thought it was pretty pretty fucking amazing so yes absolutely um a um uh think geek light it's like a light version of think geek yeah yeah it's 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 a little bit more focused than think geek really it's, yeah uh, it's, it, it's yeah, not as it, general it's, it's more it's more uh like nerd toys than uh like think geek can get into like you know scientific toys and stuff like that there's none right. of that here it's all no this is all this is all useless nerdy stuff yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly exactly but if you're into useless nerdy stuff you can cruise on over to geek n the letter n gamer uh and use ritual misery wall one word on your checkout and uh i think you'll get a discount on that yeah, so, and everything on there is really reasonably priced. It's like it's that's such that's one of the things I noticed. I mean, you might be able to find better, you know, cheaper stuff on Amazon, but this is like this is a, more of a pruned list of actual good shit that you know. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. So, 
geek in the you know geek and gamer gear with the letter n in there it's not and that would be far too difficult for some people to to <laughs> no geek and gamer gear.com and use the code ritual misery at checkout so um so i wanted to talk about selling shit since we're talking about geek gear okay i sold my scooter this week oh shit did you get a good price um not bad not bad uh, yeah uh i got well hmm. so i put it up on on facebook and the facebook pages because that's how things operate here in osan you know the craigslist and stuff like that is kind of too much too much of a mixed bag right so is this like one of those um osan airbase for sale uh I- Oh, five. Okay. <laughs> there are five of these specific pages, not just one. And actually, it would be six because one of them is the official version of one of the others. What the? It's, okay. It's 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 a fucking mess. Like everybody wants to be in charge of their own group. So what happens is uh, when you, you go on there and you're like, oh, I'll, I'll look up on you know Osan you know, sales or whatever. It was on garage sale. Well, yeah. they had a group and it went well for a while, but then one of the people got kicked because they kept posting too much stupid shit, you know, against the rules or they just got an argument with their moderator. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so they got kicked. So they started their own group and then that happens three or four times. It splinters out. Some of them die off. Some of them get really big. Yeah. Fucking really. Like, I don't understand how there has to be so much drama about some people just trying to sell some shit before they leave. On yeah, that I mean, same how token. Much, how much drama could, like, okay, what, first of all, why is everyone so obsessed with running their own fucking thing? You're only there for a year, mm. so you're probably in this site for, like, the last two months that you're there because that's the only time you give a shit. If, yeah, the first two months and the last two months. Here to start a new one, and then you care enough to be dramatic about this shit. Like, oh my god. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, but it happens. It it happened to Dias too. The Dias page is the same fucking way. The Dias sales page is exactly the same way. And uh, and here's the thing that gets me: if you're selling some shit for less than twenty bucks, if you have anything that you're selling for less than twenty bucks, just put fucking free. <laughs> Okay. It's not worth the hassle. You try to sell something for five dollars and you'll get people going, Can you accept two fifty? Uh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like it's That's five. I, I you know that so if it's under twenty bucks, don't even bother selling selling on Facebook. Don't even bother. Because <laughs> I my I've had my wife like accept payment in change, literally change. It was like it was like eight bucks. She put it on there for 15. They got her down to eight because she just wanted to get rid of it. They came in there with like three $1 bills and $5 and change. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. Like, oh my gosh. So yeah, my, my, if it's under 20 bucks, don't even bother putting it on there. It's so stupid. Um, but yeah, I went ahead and put it on there and I got a response back. Like the first, the first person responded, I put it on there for $500. Because I, I bought it for five hundred dollars. I figured that's a good place to start out. You know, I'm, I'm willing to take a little less than that. I put some work into it and and treated it well. You know, um, but I'm not trying to get it like you know, fifty bucks out the door or some shit. You know, uh, so <laughs> he responds with, "What's your lowest on the scooter?" And my response to him was, "That's like me asking you, what's the highest?" <laughs> right. Like, what's the most you're willing to spend? You know, no, it, it, that's not how that's not how bartering or, or uh, not even bartering salesmanship. I will consider it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then, so what happened is, I ended up with three people that were really wanting it, and two of them were a little bit less than than the the third. Mm. But then the third had the money right then and there, and he was going to pay me fifty bucks more than the other two were. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah. Let's do that. Let's, mm-hmm. let's make that make that happen right there. Um, yeah, so yeah, he, uh, he and and he was really cool about it. He 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 gave me half the money to you know to hold it so that I'm not like selling it to somebody else. Um, mm-hmm. 
and he's going to let me use it for the next week because we have to wait until Thursday to get it and, you know, did the inspection and all the registration, everything else done anyway, because the, because of the exercise. So now I've got a guaranteed at least half the money of it, you know, which is about what I put into it, you know, about, uh, about the repairs that I did while I had it. And we, uh, I get to, I get, I don't have to walk to work for the exercise. <laughs> <laughs> which yeah, is a real relief because I'll be putting in five miles of walking every each day that I'm out there. Oh, yeah, that's one of the worst things, man. That's how Kunsan was for me. It was such a long walk every day. Well, uh, I had to do that too because I was right next to the building that you were at when I was there. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's that's kind of how my week has been, man. Like, uh, it's just been that way. Facebook drama, packing shit up, out processing, and so on- online drama, right? <laughs> I learned an interesting tidbit about Reddit today that didn't surprise me at all. Mm. Out of all of the Reddit threads, all of them, all Reddit threads, all the Reddit, all the Reddit. If there are over a thousand comments. On a particular thread, there is an 80, oh, I didn't write down the exact number, it's 80 something percent chance, or, or 80, not chance, because this is a no shit statistic. Over 80 percent of those threads mention Hitler. <laughs> yeah. I can see that. I can see that. And it's weird because, <clears throat> excuse me. It's weird because like from 900 to 1000 had like 17% chance of but once Hitler. it once it hits that 1000 like mark a thousand, yeah 1000 is like the magic number on reddit anything over 1000 hitler <laughs> <laughs> That's so awesome What the fuck but I absolutely believe it because it doesn't just have to be on reddit it's anything that allows comments anything the conversation always breaks down into racism or uh xenophobia or uh misogyny or something just fucking terrible the worst parts of humanity come out in internet forums and the the fact that it that always ends up at hitler of course it does (laughs) can you can you imagine that that's like his his big book note tried to kill the jews Conquered Reddit and stayed. <laughs> oh, if he only knew, if he could only see the future, there's going to be this thing called the internet. Actually, there, there'd be a big progressive, like, what the fuck is that? What the fuck is that? What the fuck is that? So there's going to be these things called computers. And on these things called computers, there's going to be a thing called the internet. And on this thing called the internet, yo, and so, so on and so forth, and explain to him what Reddit is and that he is going to be mentioned so profusely mm. in Austin. I wonder if he would be happy about that. Or... <laughs> <laughs> okay, so since we're on the topic of Reddit, um, have you ever hit random on Reddit? Whoa, I feel like I have. It's the but third I... button from the left on the very yeah. top of every Reddit page. I, I can picture the, the placement of the button. Mm. I feel like I, I must have. But I cannot remember. I that. went on a Reddit tear last night. Oh shit! <laughs> it was just clicking random just to see what would come up, and a few of the a few, um, a few of them came up again and again. You could tell they were that the the they were they're, it's not a an RNG, or at least it's not a an unbiased RNG that that tackles it. Uh-huh. But there are some very interesting conversations out there, and I did notice that there were no that it seemed filtered. Like there were no NSFW pages or anything like that that ever came up during my, my random clicking. Okay. Um, which is probably good. Right. Well, which actually makes it you know a little bit more fun because anytime that you can click something randomly and, and porn pops up, it's going to just like Hitler in the Reddit stream. Yeah, so, exactly. but yeah, there are some very interesting, like things that you, that, well, that I would never have thought of people making a Reddit about. Um, it was like I hit one. It was the 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 PC Master Race Reddit. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's no no surprise that that's a big thing. 
but when I looked at it, there wasn't a whole lot of uh, uh, Apple hate. It was just like it was. It was more like people asking questions about computers. <laughs> it's got to be console hate because every time that I hear anybody ever talking about PC Master Race, it's always console hate. Right. Fuck yep. PlayStation. Fuck Xbox. Fuck yeah, all there, that. There, there was a little bit of that, but I was surprised there, there was no Apple hate on there at all. I just. Well, it's nope. probably in in the game. It, it, it was probably just the twenty that I looked at because I didn't dig any. I didn't go down any pages. <laughs> well, when, it, when it comes to, to you know the the gamer sphere, the gamer realm, like Mac doesn't usually even enter the conversation, which is a shame too because I actually really enjoy playing games on my Mac. Yeah. Um, but speaking of which, uh, this computer over here, um, I'm, the reason I played it so much last night is because I got to pack it up tonight and put it in a box so it can get shipped off and I won't even see it for like six or eight weeks and that's a shame because I really wanted to get it set up beforehand but that'll give me a project to do once I get it up there and at least I know it's all working yeah yeah but yeah if you yeah. got some if you got some spare time cruise on over to reddit and just hit that random button about five or six times and just see what pops up because it's amazing it really is I even hit the ted reddit there's a ted reddit oh shit yeah I didn't read it though. I like I was just clicking through to see what the subjects were. Like I wasn't invested. <laughs> so, uh, all right, man. So what I'll else you? Uh, the uh, random button, real quick, mm-hmm. and uh, got Singapore. Oh, I'm sure that's got some NSFW stuff on it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there are some threads. Um, yeah. So anyway. Yeah. What else you got, man? What else you got this week? Um, not really anything else. Uh, tomorrow, uh, me and the boys are going over to Las Cruces to watch a WWE show. Nice. Should be fun. It's going to be the first one that Isaac has been to that he remembers. Last time he was at one, I think he was like six months old or something. Mm. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, this is the first time that, that any of us have been to a WWE show in a long, 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 long time. Um, I, Lucas and I used to go every time WWE was in town when we lived in Las Vegas. Mm-hmm. We went every time, which was like all the time. Yeah, it did seem like it was quite a bit. It was several times a year. <laughs> but I don't know. It, it's it's always a good time. I mean, it's just like going. It's just like baseball. Like you, you don't have to like baseball to go to the, a baseball game, and you're gonna have a good time. Well, most people. Most people, you're gonna have a good time. You don't have to be a sports fan to go to a sporting event and have a good time. Uh, um, okay, if it, I go to, if I go to a baseball game and I have a good time, it's not because of the baseball game. Okay, that that's probably <laughs> it's, uh, be, it's because the, of the um, the amount of alcohol consumed and the party afterwards. Right. Well, Just so we're but, clear. but anyway, the uh, for the people that can have a good time at a at a sporting event, but aren't necessarily sports fans. Wrestling is the same way. You don't have to be a, a, a wrestling fan to go to a live show and have a hell of a good time because it's it's always fun. Just the it, it's the like you said, it's not the baseball game. It's it's everything else around it. Yeah, the it's environment. Not, yeah, it's the it's the crowd interaction. The ambiance. You become part of the show with the you know with the cheering, the booing, the sometimes the chanting or the you know sometimes you do the wave or you know whatever the whatever the thing right. is. But just participating in a group activity like that is just. There's just something about it that just kind of makes it a good time. And, and WWE events are, are always a, a really good time. And you can usually get tickets pretty cheap. So, so. little little difference between WWE and, and MMA. Different kind of energy. Yeah, yeah. M- MMA is a lot more intense. Yeah, yeah. It, it, not the excited intense, the... All right, who's gonna try to whoop whose ass in the crowd today? Like, tense. Well, serious, like, like you, like you're like, like, oh my, oh god, oh god, oh god, this guy better be, you know, fuck, beat his ass, beat his, <laughs> you know. And, or, and you're just talking be, about the crowd, like, and then, then, then the, then the fighters come out to the ring. <laughs> right. Oh, absolutely. Yes, that's exactly what I was talking about. Yeah. Uh, but, 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 pro wrestling, though, it's more of a just a more of a party kind of. Yeah. But. Yay! Yeah. I'm here. I might be on TV. <laughs> yeah. Last time, last time I went to uh, an MMA was at the Blaisdell, and we were sitting right behind the the row behind Dog the Bounty Hunter, and oh, all his you know his sons and his, the whole family was was there, uh, except for Beth and the babies. I think they they stayed home, but um, yeah, we sat right behind them, and uh, yeah, that was a, that was a really fun show. That was 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because everybody like it it was interesting. The, the the fights were interesting and then the the people in the crowd there in Hawaii constantly coming up to meet, you know, Dog the Bounty Hunter. Yeah. And then hearing the conversations that he was having with his family in between the people coming up. Like it was like, oh yeah, yeah, I remember that fucking asshole. Yeah, he, he, he's he's you know blah blah like like the, the they they had people that they had gone and, and arrested or whatever or apprehended if you will coming right. up to them and saying things you know like saying hey or whatever else and then they would talk shit about him. <laughs> it was it was great. It was fun. The fights and and the comedy. It was great. <laughs> oh man. <sighs> So where can people find more of you and keep track of your uh, your weekly exploits, man? Go to Twitter, at RM underscore Del Noche. You can also go to RateBeer.com and look up username Del Noche. There's two brand new rates from last night. Oh, nice. Pick that up. Nice. Uh, you can find me at Ethan Kane on Twitter. I have made the decision that I am going to try, and I'm, I'm, I'm saying this publicly to hold myself accountable, I am going to try. It said accountable, right? Yes. Because what I heard was cannibal. <laughs> so, so this is a new thing you're trying. <laughs> it's gonna be awesome. Directions. All right. Um, so, I. So. Yes, I. I am going to. I'm. I'm. I don't, I don't know if I'm gonna vlog it. I don't know if I'm gonna actually do videos, or whatever else. But at least take pictures mm-hmm. of each step of my move the entire trip at least one thing a day so i'm going to blog my trip you should periscope i I don't know if i can take periscope and put it into a single location because what i'd really like to do is have one single thread on richmisery.com that has all the stuff and i don't know if i can capture a periscope i haven't really looked into it ah okay oh yeah check it out so I want to do that. I want to put something down every single day. Of course, it won't be updated every day because there are parts of, of the trip between my house in Texas and my my final location where there is no cell service and no internet service. There are lots of days, day long swaths of no coverage, maybe multiple day slots. <laughs> um, so, but I'm gonna I'm gonna try to do that and just catalog the whole thing from the from the day i arrive probably more like the day we actually start the physical move because the first couple days we get there are gonna be boring for everybody else i'm gonna go to a couple soccer games with the kids and like you know hang out with the family Um, but once we actually begin the no shit move i think i'm gonna go from there until we move into our new house at our at our new location and uh, see how that goes and just put something in there every single day and let that happen well, that's cool, man. That's I'm definitely looking forward to seeing that. It'll probably be really boring. Uh, it'll be well, uh, well it'll, but but it it'll, should at least have some really pretty pictures. Right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I mean, there's there, going... that are definitely going to be kind of boring and mundane. Like, yeah, I put this in a box. Uh, but there's oh, definitely no. interesting things because it's a road trip. So you 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 can talk about the the towns that you go through. Unfortunately. You can talk about it's all on the on the the highway. Yeah, unfortunately, there won't be any. Oh, I put some stuff in a box, and that was all I did today, because well, it it is it is such a massive time crunch to get from Texas to anywhere along the coast, let alone as far as we're going. Um, it, it, like it, it's gonna be, it's gonna, oh man, <laughs> like this time right now, going through the exercise and trying to pack up my room and get stuff ready for TMO. This is my relaxation time. <laughs> Calm before the storm. Yeah, because once once I get back to the states, it's gonna be crazy. It's gonna be absolutely nuts. Um, but <sighs> yeah, look forward to that. So I th- I, d- I made that decision this week. Uh, Listen more of the CGP Gray podcasts, uh-huh. Codex, and Hello Internet, and just some some. If you're into workflows and figuring out how to uh, CGP Gray, like he designs his life around the optimal way to work. So that there's as little wasted time as possible. Wow. And there's no way I'm ever going to reach wasted time zero, you know, but 
it's it's very interesting to listen to someone else's workflow when it's that involved and that in depth and they put so much thought and process and and uh, and, and work into their work process. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. It's 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 more than just two guys shooting the shit. But anyway. Um, but yeah, you can find me on Ethan Kane or at Ethan Kane <laughs> to get back away from the uh, the fourth fourth <laughs> tangent. Uh, you can find the show at Ritual Misery on the same Twitter. You can go to ritualmisery.reddit.com if you'd like to add things in for our uh, for our Reddit. Oh man, what <laughs> what a show! What a show! You got lost. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, it's, it's it's it happens. It's it's been a day. It's been a day. It's been it's, a week. It's it's <laughs> it's been a it's been a fucking year. Is what it's been. It's been a year. It's been a time. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. So you can uh, email us, podcast at ritualmisery.com. You can call and leave us a voicemail, 567-69-TRMPC. That's 567-698-7672. And, of course, you can find all these links and more ways to support the show and give feedback at our website, ritualmisery.com. Thanks so much to Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use your music. For me, for Kent, and for you, this has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. See you. Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>